We know already that the government says they're going to preserve the health service budgets, but we know already that health service jobs are being cut, and we'll hear a bit more about that in detail. We know that jobs across education are being cut, and we know that jobs across the media, where I work, are being cut. People ask me, why is the NUJ supporting a march like this? We have hundreds of people working in local government right across the board in Scotland and in the rest of the UK as journalists and working in local government media organisations. This morning, Eric Pickles from the Conservative Party talked about cuts in exactly those areas. So the NUJ is very, very proud to be standing alongside other trade unions and, and with the rest of the movement campaigning to preserve jobs and to tell this government that this will not do, this will not stand up, uh, we will stand up and fight all of these, these cuts right across the board. So, uh, with that in mind, we'll come to our first speaker uh, from the PCS, John Miller, uh, who works at, he's a steward at the Cumbernauld Tax Office. John. Right, cheers, Pete. I work in uh, Inland Revenue in Cumbernauld, and we've got about 12, 1,500 folk that actually work in that office. Now, the announcement that took place on Tuesday about the emergency budget made reference to up to 25% certain civil service departments would have to face some cuts and then the revenue and customs is more than likely going to be one of those. The Inland Revenue staff that work in that office are part of that grouping have been subjected since 2004 when jo uh, Gordon Brown as the Chancellor got up and announced 100,000 job cuts in the civil service have been subjected to pay cuts long and long term since then because they haven't received a, a proper pay rise in that process. The announcement of a two year pay freeze is going to add on to that misery. I've worked there for 30 years. I'm at the lowest grades, but at the highest level that you can get within that, and that earn and the take home pay it works out uh, or just over about £12,500. They're telling us folk that they need those areas again in my area, in my office, where the majority of them will be earning less than £21,000, that they won't get a pay rise for the next two years. Similarly, what folk might not be aware of is the fact that we've also been engaged in industrial action this year to defend our, what is called our compensation scheme. That equates to roughly our redundancy pay. The previous administration, the Labour administration, stated that they were going to change that and folk were going to lose up to a third of the redundancy pay. In response to that, we took three days of industrial action and it took it to the High Court where we overturned the previous government's uh, attempts to reduce that uh, redundancy pay. What that means is that now we have to go back and negotiate with the current Tory Lib Dem coalition on that basis. And the statements that they have then made, not just on the question about this, the, the job cuts are definitely going to follow once it's announced on the, the on a comprehensive spending review in Open. The pay freeze, they have also identified that they'll have to sit down and discuss with us about our redundancy payments. And they've made it quite clear in the back of that what that will mean. It will be a re-introduction to try to impose something that has been shown that has been unjust like even according to the High Court. Added to that, they've then also stated that your pension will be then reduced. So we've got a litany of attacks in general within the civil service. Leaving aside the revenue and customs stuff, there's also across the board I attended, again with the PCS, about two and a half, three years ago with other reps, a seminar that was organised by our union with an academic, a guy, Professor Steve Davis from Cardiff University, where he looked at the whole issue about what was being planned for the welfare state in general. In effect, the hand in long stock, stock and barrel, the service provisions, whether it be a job centre pluses, were all areas of the, the civil service, handed over to the private sector. Now this professor identified that this was a false economy, that the public sector are the best at actually delivering the services and the private sector is a sham to believe that they actually are going to do something better. So again, what we've identified or in the PCS nationally is that the onslaught is not just on the basis of your terms and conditions, it's about the services that are needed by the most vulnerable in society, ourselves in general, tax collection, benefit provision, Everybody is going to have to come, I was going to come across it at some point. They even announced, uh, I think, uh, on the PCS website that they're talking on the back of the announcement Tuesday, one in three courts in England and Wales are to be closed. You're talking about massive areas which we just consider as being, you know, as part of, and parcel of the functions of normal society will be removed. 
I our annual general conference passed there in May was a, the first motion that was to put forward was the question about recognising what was going to be before us and we've decided that we're going to organise as best we can local groups campaigning across the whole trade union sector, but in PCS being at the vanguard leading that, calling on other unions to stand together in the public sector and not to be picked off one by one, but joining with the community groups, whether it be resource centres, unemployed worker centres, just any forms of activism at all to stay, get demonstrations like this so every quarter, whether it be school closures, you name it, PCS are going to be the ones that are going to seek to formulate that opposition and therefore a similar events like today are a herald in that whole process, the start of by which we can actually take this into the communities, into the streets, into the trade unions and say no, this is not acceptable, we're not going to take that, or allow this to happen, whether it be our pay, our terms and conditions or even the service provision that we all rely on as we say for Cradle to grave. Uh, John, thanks very much indeed. We've got now got Stephanie Hurd, who's, who's from Unison, chair of the local government committee in, in Unison. We know who's to blame for the global economic crisis. Greed-driven bankers, their corporate greed blinded them to their irresponsible actions, and we've seen the effects of this all over the world, in Greece, Ireland, Italy. And here in Scotland, they've put workers, working class people's jobs, and their livelihoods at risk. And here's yesterday's headlines for the, the paper um, where I work in North Ayrshire Council. Cut spice is a thousand jobs go. This is a very small council in North Ayrshire. It's got about seven and a half thousand people. We're going to be losing that number of, of workers over the next couple of years. That's the price that we're having to pay for the mistakes of the bankers. We know only too well the human cost of the economic crisis, but it caused the problem, but we're the ones being made to pay for it. Every job lost it affects every public service and is a personal tragedy. All of us use public services, and you know that the average household in Scotland benefits from about £10,000 a year in services each year. So we all rely on them, not just the most vulnerable. And during this recession, we have certainly seen demand in our services has increased and not decreased. The ongoing cuts to public sector funding will impact on every single one of us. Cuts will increase costs to families and will certainly delay the economic recovery. Cuts in jobs and attacks on our pensions will only lead to less money being spent to stimulate the local economy. Now more than ever, we need our public services, but the level of cuts to council budgets, compounded by council tax freezes, means there just isn't enough money to provide for everyday services, never mind the specialist care and support to vulnerable people. Westminster wants to make £6 billion of savings in waste and efficiencies in local government. I could give them some alternatives to cutting services. Scottish Council spent £47 million last year on consultants and their job was to find ways to cut our services and to cut our jobs. I would suggest they cut that out. Westminster, you could cut Trident instead of our jobs. Unison has certainly provided a strategy, an alternative strategy to cutting care, to closing libraries, to closing old folks' homes. We think there is another way. Cuts in our services shouldn't be inevitable. We have to resist the cuts that are detrimental to individuals, to families, communities, the economy, our society. Where's the financial sense in putting thousands of people onto the dome? Where's the moral justification in, in cutting care services? Of course, you might think there's a degree of self-interest in this. One of those thousand jobs might be mine, or might be Franny Sam beside me here. But let's not be pitted one worker against the other. This isn't a fight against health service worker or council worker or front room services versus back room services. We all have to defend our public services. We need to show that there is in fact another alternative, alternative to this government's cuts agenda. We have the opportunity, just as John said, to build alliances with other trade unions, with community groups, with service users. We need to find the way to work together to resist cuts and to raise an alternative to the Tory agenda for cutting services, to cutting our terms and conditions, to cutting our pensions. We want to increase our ability to protect our members' jobs and the services that they provide. In the next few years, we will require the trade union movement to be stronger and we must take the lead in defending public services. We shouldn't be timid. We need to face down those people who put profit before people. The trade union movement can be the loudest voice in campaigning for a fair society. And colleagues, this is a fight we have to win. Thank you.